Number 10, an ancient murder. An ancient murder from over 4,000 years ago has finally been solved by archaeologists. The murder scene was first discovered in a Spanish cave. Researchers came across a group of skeletons from the late Neolithic period in 1999. The skeletons had clearly been murdered, then dumped deep inside the cave. 18 bodies were found here, along with 1,332 bone fragments. Using modern technology, scientists have finally come up with a cause of death. They know that there were two types of traumas exhibited by the skeletons, blunt force and sharp force. In other words, these people were brutally beaten and stabbed to death. Scientists have now identified the brutal murder weapon used in these killings. They believe the weapon was a large stone axe, likely sharpened to a point on one end so that it could be used for stabbing as well as beating. However, scientists are still looking for a motive for these barbarous killings. They blame interpersonal violence, but nobody knows what would have caused someone to go on a murder rampage with their trusty stone axe. Number 9. Bishop with a baby. Researchers at the Lund University Hospital in Sweden were shocked when they conducted a CT scan on a Scandinavian bishop from the year 1679 and discovered he had a tiny fetus tucked underneath his feet. Nobody knew just what to make of the bizarre discovery, as it's not every day that a mummified bishop's body would be found harboring a tiny unborn child. But after years of mystery, researchers have finally made some progress. First, we need to know who this bishop was. His name was Pieter Vinstrup, a prominent figure in Scandinavian history and one of the original fathers of Lund University. He was buried beneath a cathedral in Lund and became naturally mummified because of the plant material used to build his coffin. And because he had died over a long period of illness, by the time he was finally buried, he was practically a mummy anyway. But where did the fetus come from? It was obviously concealed beneath his feet on purpose. Researchers now know that there was a direct connection between the bishop and the child, and that the fetus may have been placed underneath his feet in secret by whoever organized his funeral. DNA evidence has shown that the fetus was probably the bishop's grandson. They shared 25% of their DNA. It's likely that the child's mother, after having a stillbirth, secreted the fetus into the coffin with the bishop in hopes that the child would be close to its grandfather in death. Number 8. The Mysterious Unicorn a new fossil discovery has shed some light on the mythical unicorn. While most of us believe white horses with horns growing out of their foreheads are just myths, the truth is that they may have actually been inspired by real unicorn creatures. This fossil was discovered in Kazakhstan belonging to a prehistoric animal with a single horn that walked across our planet at the same time as humans. It dates back 29,000 years to before modern civilization, but to a time when human beings were still communicating with one another. Scientists have called it the Elasmotherium Sibiricum, or the Siberian Unicorn for short. The creature is closely related to a rhinoceros, but its horn was significantly longer. Scientists say its horn could have been several feet long, and while it wasn't a magical white stallion that could shoot rainbows, it likely fascinated our ancient ancestors enough that they told stories about the Siberian Unicorn. Those amazing stories have made it all the way to us in modern times. Number 7. King Arthur's Court Camelot was the place where King Arthur held court at his round table. Most of us accept the stories of King Arthur as legends, but others have taken the tales a little more seriously. Experts have been wondering for decades just how real Camelot and King Arthur really were. Was he a real king? Did Camelot really exist? Depending on which expert you ask, the mystery has actually been solved already. The primary contender for the real-life location of Camelot is Carleon in South Wales. Two experts of British history, Geoffrey of Monmouth and Catherine de Troyes, have Camelot placed at this very spot. Back in the 5th century, this was one of three Roman forts still standing in Britain. To understand the significance of this a bit better, keep in mind that the Welsh people of today are descendants of the Roman Britons who were pushed out of what is now England by the Anglo-Saxon invaders in the 5th century. 
The few descendants of the old Roman settlers were forced across the border, right to where Carlion is, and considering many historians believe King Arthur was a real leader of the Roman British people fighting against the invaders, it makes sense that he had used this place as his fortress. Through the years, Arthur and Camelot simply became more legendary than they really were. If Camelot truly did exist, it was almost certainly here at Carlion. Number 6. Mystery of the Hermit King For the past few centuries, archaeologists haven't paid much attention to a particular bizarre cave dwelling in Britain. To be honest, they thought it was an ornamental building made as a joke back in the 18th century. It wasn't until just recently that the mystery of the cave dwelling was solved. As it turns out, the cave really was used as a house. In fact, it was built for a mysterious hermit king after he was exiled and forced to live alone in the wilderness. And it wasn't in the 18th century. It was 1200 years ago. The mystery actually has two parts. There's the cave, then there's the legend of King Erdwulf of Northumbria. Legend says that the king was chased away from his throne for mysterious reasons in 806 AD, then banished to live in a cave for the rest of his life. He died in 830 AD and was buried five miles from the cave. It wasn't until now that archaeologists connected the cave and the story of King Erdwulf. Edmund Simmons, an archaeologist from the Royal Agricultural University, believes the king lived out his final days in the cave under the ever-present eyes of his enemies. It wasn't as great as being a king, but at least he had his own house. Number 5. Fire and Brimstone the ancient Middle Eastern city of Tal el Hammam, as it's known today, was wiped out 3,600 years ago. Up until recently, nobody had really known what exactly happened to this ancient city. It looked as if it had been destroyed by a sudden earthquake or an exploding volcano, but there was just no way to tell what caused the abrupt deaths of everyone in the city, ruining the buildings and blanketing the town in fire. But now, the mystery has been solved. Experts in asteroid impacts stepped up to solve the case. They now believe that the ancient town was wiped out by a sudden asteroid strike and that the event inspired the biblical story of Sodom and Gomorrah. The strike would have been similar to the one that killed the dinosaurs, just significantly smaller. The piece of spare rock probably exploded as a fireball 2.5 miles above the ancient city. Even though it didn't hit the city, the blast would have been 1,000 times more powerful than the atomic bomb dropped in Hiroshima. Everyone in the city was blinded immediately. The air temperature rose to 3,600 degrees Fahrenheit and the city was basically melted. At the same time, wind from the blast would have swept through the city streets of Jericho, 14 miles away. Experts believe that when the citizens of Jericho went to investigate the blast and found the entire city gone, as if snuffed out by a great god's fist, this is what inspired the story of the city of Sodom that eventually made its way into the Bible. Number 4. How the Pyramids Were Built Archaeologists believe they have finally solved the mystery of how the Great Pyramids of Egypt were built. The mystery was solved thanks to a simple discovery, a ramp from 4,500 years ago. According to the researchers with the French Institute for Oriental Archaeology, as well as experts with the University of Liverpool, the ramp was used to move huge blocks of alabaster. These alabaster blocks were cut from the slopes of a quarry, then moved using the ramps. It was actually quite simple. On each side of the ramp would be a flight of stairs where huge wooden posts were positioned. The ramp then acted like a sled with ropes fixed to the wooden posts. Workers could pull the blocks up or down the ramp using the wooden poles, ropes, and the power of gravity. With this simple method, they would have been able to easily move heavy stones up large inclines, hence getting giant pieces of rock to the top of the pyramids with relative ease. Number 3. The Origin of the Sarsen Stones Speaking of huge rocks, researchers believe they've also solved the mystery of where the Stonehenge building materials came from. The actual megalithic stones used in the construction of this ancient sanctuary are called Sarsen Stones. Archaeologists were able to pinpoint the source of these stones about 15 miles away from Stonehenge. 
They did it by analyzing the chemical composition of the stones, then comparing their findings to the chemical composition of a crop of similar stones. The huge pieces of material, some of which weigh over 20 tons and stand over 21 feet tall, came from an area known as Marlborough Downs. Discovering the origin of the stones has only solved one part of the larger mystery though. Researchers still don't know what Stonehenge was used for exactly or how they carried the stones to the building site from 15 miles away. Maybe they used ramps similar to what the ancient Egyptians had, but that mystery is still being investigated. What do you think it was used for? Let us know in the comments below. Number 2. The Kennewick Man the identity of the Kennewick Man has finally been solved. The mystery was ongoing for almost two decades, ever since a pair of youngsters stumbled upon a human skull inside the Columbian River in Kennewick, Washington. What first seemed to be the head of a murder victim turned into one of the most important archaeological discoveries of the 21st century. Here's why the skull was such a mystery. It had very unusual characteristics, so unusual that nobody could figure out where the man came from or why he was there. Scientists were divided, some believing he came from Japan and others saying he was Polynesian. There were even some that claimed Europe as a point of origin, but the skull was found to be 9,500 years old, so none of these theories were readily accepted. But thanks to dedicated archaeologists like James Chatters, who was involved with the discovery, we now know exactly where the Kennewick man came from. The experts used DNA sequencing to reveal that he was a Native American. This honestly makes the most sense, as anything else would have drastically changed what we know about North American history. However, researchers still don't know why he had such unusual features. They've actually managed to reconstruct his face based on his skull, and despite having Native American blood, he didn't look anything like a Native American. He must have seemed like an alien to his own people, born with totally different features than everyone else around him. Or maybe he was an alien. Number 1. The Antikythera Mechanism the Antikythera mechanism has been a mystery to scientists ever since it was discovered at the bottom of the sea by sponge divers in the year 1901. The mechanism had been on a merchant ship that sank off the coast of Greece 2,000 years ago. When the sponge divers found the ship, they looted as much treasure from it as possible. The most bizarre relic was the Antikythera mechanism, which has gained significant fame in modern times because it looks like it came from an ancient computer. People have speculated that this rusty green piece of metal was once part of a larger, more complex computer developed by either incredibly intelligent ancient people or aliens. But the mystery of the mechanism has finally been solved. Because so much of the mechanism was missing, it was a lot of work piecing it back together again to recreate what it used to look like. But engineering experts from University College London have now built a working replica of the actual machine that the mechanism broke apart from. According to Adam Wojcik, one of the scientists working on the project, the mechanism was just a simple calendar. Well, maybe not that simple. The mechanism tracked the movements of the sun, moon, and five planets. However, the mechanism's designers assumed that these objects revolve around the Earth, so their movements are far from correct. Basically, the mechanism was just a fancy astrological calendar, similar to a modern watch. Are there any ancient mysteries you're still waiting for scientists to solve? Number 10. Aztec Skull Sacrifice In recent years, archaeologists unearthed a circular tower made from hundreds of human skulls beneath modern-day Mexico City. The Tower of Skulls was found at the ancient city of Tenochtitlan. Known as the Hue Zompantli, the structure measures 16.4 foot in diameter. It dates back to the 15th and early 16th centuries and is dedicated to Huitzilopochtli, the Aztec god of war, sun, and human sacrifice. At least 603 skulls have been found so far. Many of them belong to warriors, while others were probably the skulls of men, women, and even children who were sacrificed to the Aztec gods. Biological anthropologist Rodrigo Bolanos said that it was unusual to find children's skulls at the site. In fact, 
It was something archaeologists had not come across before. Sacrificial victims were considered sacred gifts to the gods and were sometimes even seen as personifications of the deities, and human sacrifices were a daily ritual in Mesoamerica. The Aztecs displayed freshly severed heads on zompantli, or skull racks. After they were done being exhibited, the skulls were transferred to the tower. Hernán Cortés and the Spanish conquistadors he led on his conquest of Tenochtitlan in 1521 witnessed human sacrifices and were reportedly horrified by the practice. Researchers believe that the Hue Zompantli is one of seven similar structures that once stood in the area, based on the contemporary accounts of the cities captured by Cortés. They believe the conquistadors destroyed the other structures. Number 9. Nine Neanderthals Earlier this year, Italy's cultural ministry announced that the remains of nine Neanderthals were found in a cave near Rome. One individual died between 90 and 100,000 years ago, and the eight others perished sometime between 50 and 68,000 years ago. Seven of them were adult males, one was an adult female, and one was a young boy. It appears as though several of them were hunted and killed by hungry hyenas, who dragged the bodies back to their den and ate them. A collapse sealed off the cave for tens of thousands of years and preserved the remains inside by protecting them from the elements. Alongside the Neanderthals, archaeologists found traces of vegetables and numerous animals, including rhinos, giant deer, horses, and hyenas. Speaking with The Guardian, Tor Vergata University professor Mario Rolfo explained the hyenas targeted sick, elderly, and otherwise vulnerable Neanderthals. A dental examination revealed that the group had a varied diet but mostly ate cereal. Rolfo and his colleagues planned to analyze the individual's DNA to learn more about their lifestyle and circumstances. The Neanderthals are largely shrouded in mystery, despite numerous discoveries being made in recent years. Experts don't know why they went extinct around 40,000 years ago, what our exact relationship was with them, or what their migration patterns were. Advancing DNA technology and new discoveries are greatly helping when it comes to better understanding the Neanderthals but it will likely be some time before all the pieces of the puzzle come together accordingly. Number 8. Prehistoric Eggshell A farmer named Antonio José Nievas encountered an unexpected Christmas surprise in 2015 when he spotted what looked like a partially exposed shell laying in the mud on his property in Argentina. He began digging around it and unearthed what he thought was a dinosaur egg. After finding the black, scaly object, Nievas reported the discovery to his wife, who told news agency AFP and that everyone initially thought he was joking and laughed. While it turned out that Nievas was wrong about the artifact being a dinosaur egg, he had nevertheless found something incredible. Experts identified the fossilized egg as belonging to the giant ancestor of the modern-day armadillo, known as a glyptodont. Paleontologist Alejandro Cramars explained that it's common in the region to find fossils of the animal which went extinct thousands of years ago. The specimen that Nievas discovered was around 10,000 years old, which makes it relatively young, according to Kramars. Glyptodonts evolved into existence around 20 million years ago. They lived throughout South America for tens of millions of years and spread to North America at some point after the two continents became connected. The creatures died out at the end of the last ice age, along with most other megafauna, or super-large animals in the Americas. Number 7. Sewer Full of Infant Graves Infanticide is the act of deliberately killing a baby. It's something most people avoid thinking about and find appalling, understandably so. Archaeologists on Israel's southern coast had no choice but to confront this disturbing reality in 1988, when they unearthed the bones of nearly 100 infants in the ancient port city of Ashkelon. The skeletons were found in a sewer beneath the ancient bathhouse, dating back to the late Roman and early Byzantine eras. It was the largest mass grave of infants ever discovered. The babies died when they were practically newborns. None of them lived to be more than a week old, and the bodies were discarded into the pit shortly after their deaths. Their remains lacked any sign of disease or deformities, and they appeared to be healthy when they died. The deceased infants were found among animal bones, pottery fragments, coins, and garbage. They weren't given a funeral or laid to rest with any grave goods. Experts believe that the babies were the victims of exposure, 
a Roman custom of getting rid of unwanted and sick babies by leaving them unattended and letting the gods decide their fate. The Romans did not consider newborns to be fully human, and they saw it as a parent's right to commit infanticide. According to forensic anthropologist Patricia Smith, and girls were killed disproportionately because they were often viewed as burdens, while boys were valued both as heirs and for their ability to support their family in old age. Yet the bones in the pit at Ashkelon were mostly male. But why? Erotic pottery fragments and a sign found at the site that says, Enter and enjoy, suggest that the bathhouse the sewer is beneath doubled as a brothel. Prostitution was common in the Roman world, and the babies were likely the unwanted children of sex workers. Number 6. Burlington Bunker In 1955, the British government built a sprawling 35-acre underground property called the Burlington Bunker. It was kept completely hidden from the public, including the local population, who had no idea that there was a top-secret bunker sitting 100 feet beneath the churches, homes, and quaint cobblestone streets of Wiltshire. Built during the Cold War, the facility was designed to enable government employees to continue working in the event of a nuclear attack. It was bomb-proof, radiation-proof, and poison gas proof. For 30 years, the site was home to England's second largest phone exchange, although the system was never used. The Burlington Bunker could accommodate up to 4,000 central government employees at any time, and was equipped to support them for up to three months with no outside contact. It even had its own water treatment facility and was supplied with water from a nearby lake. Designed for both working and living, the site had kitchens, offices, laundry facilities, supply rooms, cafeterias, a hospital, and more. There was also a television studio that the government could broadcast public messages from if the need arose. The bunker itself measured over a mile long and had over 60 miles of roads and a secret rail line connecting it to the main railway. But the facility was never used, and by the time it finally closed, it was being run by just four Ministry of Defense employees. Its existence was finally declassified in 2004. The Burlington Bunker's future remains uncertain as it sits frozen in time. Some people are fighting to save it, while others believe that it should be repurposed. Number 5. Missing Couple Found After 75 Years Marcelin Dumoulin and his wife Francine set off on foot one day in 1942 to feed their animals in the Swiss Alps. They never returned to the village, Saviès, leaving their seven children to wonder what could have possibly happened to them. Custody of the kids was split up among several local families, and the children had no choice but to move on with their lives. The mystery was finally put to rest in 2017, when a ski lift worker discovered the couple's bodies wedged into an alpine glacier at 8,580 feet above sea level. He initially thought he had spotted some rocks, but took a closer look and realized he was looking at human corpses. The bodies wore clothing that was characteristic of the time when the Dubolins disappeared offering newfound hope that their bodies had finally been found. By the time DNA testing confirmed that the remains belonged to the Demolins, only two of the children were still alive. The findings brought closure to their surviving kids and to the village, who spent the better part of a century wondering about the couple's fate. How do you think the couple ended up where they did? Do you know of any long unsolved disappearances? Let us know in the comments below, and don't forget to like and subscribe for more awesome content. Number 4 submerged settlement. While helping with a pipeline installation in Switzerland earlier this year, underwater archaeologists spotted piles of old mud-encrusted wood at the bottom of Lake Lucerne. Upon taking a closer look, they discovered pottery and stills that once held up houses. Samples from the sunken village were dated to around 1000 BC, confirming that the city of Lucerne was settled around 2000 years earlier than previously thought. Found at least 13 feet below the water's surface, the settlement adds a new chapter to Lucerne's mysterious history. Before the discovery, researchers were able to trace the city's past to around 800 years ago. They suspected the people lived in the area long before that, but lacked evidence of earlier beginnings. Lake Lucerne's water levels were much lower than they are now until the 15th century, when human activities and natural events caused the water level to rise. It's likely that the village sat alongside the lake before being consumed by it. Further investigation will hopefully add some insight into the everyday lives of Lucerne's earliest known settlers. Number 3. Headless Viking Pit Back in 2009, 
archaeologists unearthed a burial pit filled with dozens of beheaded skeletons near the lakeside town of Weymouth on the English Channel coast. The massacred headless bodies all belonged to young men. They were buried naked and in a tangled mess, with their heads stacked neatly to the side. The skeletons bore telltale signs of violence, including deep cuts to the skull, jaw, and neck. It was clear, based on these injuries, that the group was taken captive and executed by a more powerful enemy, who repeatedly struck their victims' heads before hacking them off entirely. Other injuries, including sliced fingers, showed that the men had fought for their lives while they were being mercilessly slaughtered. They died sometime between 910 and 1030 AD, according to radiocarbon dating results. During that time period, the English and the Vikings were frequently at war. Researchers were initially unsure who the brutally decapitated men were. An analysis of 10 individuals' teeth revealed that they were from different parts of Scandinavia, confirming that they were Vikings. Most of them died in their early 20s. Experts identified Norway and Sweden as possible places of origin, and they think that one person may have come from north of the Arctic Circle. While the English often lost battles against the Vikings, the gory discovery shows that the intruding raiders were not always victorious. Number 2. Persian Cup in Siberia While monitoring the melting permafrost above the Arctic Circle on Siberia's Gaiden Peninsula in 2016, a team of scientists discovered a fragment of a medieval bronze cup that came from Persia, now known as Iran. Similar artifacts have been found in Western Siberia before, but never this far north, according to researcher Andrei Gusev. Researchers believe that the cup was made sometime during the 10th or 11th century and was brought to Siberia around 200 years later. It was found roughly 2,300 miles from where it was manufactured, testifying to the vast trade networks that existed in a world that seemed much smaller without modern technology. Asian merchants appeared in modern-day Russia's Upper Kama region during the 6th and 7th centuries. They exchanged their goods for fur, walrus tusks, and hunting birds. In addition to the cup, the team unearthed a bronze knife handle and a ceramic pot. The indigenous Kanti and Mansi peoples placed high value on Persian imports. They assigned ritual meaning to the objects, keeping them in holy places and offering them as gifts to the gods and spirits. They also used Persian dishes to serve ceremonial foods to the gods during festivals. It's entirely possible that more of these artifacts will appear as the permafrost continues to melt reflecting one of the few upsides of the world's changing climate. Number 1. King Richard III's Remains King Richard III ruled England for just two years, from 1483 until his death in 1485. Throughout his short-lived reign, he managed to become one of the most controversial monarchs in British history. He took the crown by force by taking it from his nephews and having them executed. William Shakespeare famously depicted Richard III as a deformed hunchback representing a physical manifestation of the king's depraved mind. Yikes. Richard III died in battle from two fatal blows to the back of the head. Legend holds that his body was dumped in the river Soar, but this was proven to be untrue in 2012, when archaeologists discovered the king's remains beneath a parking lot. Hardly a fitting place for a member of the monarchy. He was buried at the Greyfriars Priory in Leicester, and his grave had been forgotten about by the time the priory was shut down and demolished in 1538. A mitochondrial DNA analysis proved the remains did belong to Richard III, and an examination revealed that he was suffering from a roundworm infection when he died. He was given a proper funeral and reburied at Leicester Cathedral in 2015. Number 10. The Bridgewater Triangle the Bridgewater Triangle is a smaller, lesser-known version of the Bermuda Triangle. It's a section of land about 200 square miles inside southeastern Massachusetts. It's a triangle between the towns of Abington, Rehoboth, and Freetown. All kinds of wild and unbelievable things are said to occur inside the Bridgewater Triangle. The area is basically a paranormal vortex with everything from alien sightings to poltergeists, great balls of fire flying through the sky and even Bigfoot-type creatures lurking in the wilderness. Oh yeah, and there have been Thunderbird sightings here too, with people claiming to spot flying creatures that look like pterodactyls soaring across the sky. 
even the Norton police sergeant, Thomas Downey, witnessed these incredible mythical birds in the sky. To be honest, there are so many supernatural occurrences here that it's hard to believe more people don't know about it. Not far off Route 24, creepy and horrific mutations and alleged animal sacrifice were discovered in the Freetown Fall River State Forest. For many years, it's been believed to be the site of strange rituals, not just animal sacrifices, but also human murders that were possibly committed by satanic cults. Sadly, the forest is also the site of many suicides, which adds even more to the sinister atmosphere. People claim to see the ghosts sitting on rocks and sometimes even dancing. There are legends of Native American curses and some even say there's a swamp monster called the Pukwuji. Nobody knows why this particular part of Massachusetts is so creepy, but if the locals are to be believed, the entire area is a hotbed for the supernatural. Number 9. Hegra is a mysterious ancient city located in the desert north of Saudi Arabia that has gone untouched for thousands of years. Giant boulders the size of buildings and rocky outcrops beautifully carved and with classical style columns poke out of the sands like lovely scattered seeds. Hegra was once a major international trading hub but it was abandoned 2,000 years ago and hasn't really gotten much attention since. It looks so similar to the more famous destination of Petra in neighboring Jordan that you might not even be able to tell them apart. But this shouldn't be a huge surprise. After all, the two sites are only a couple of hundred miles apart. They were also built by the same people. It was the Nabataean kingdom who constructed both Petra and Hegra before they vanished from the pages of history forever. The Nabataeans are one of the most intriguing civilizations that most people have never even heard of. They were master merchants who dwelled in the desert and controlled all the trade moving through Arabia, interacting with the kingdoms of Mesopotamia, Egypt, and Syria, along with all the other major players in the Mediterranean. They were the number one suppliers of frankincense and myrrh, which was highly prized throughout the world for religious ceremonies. However, they were destroyed in the first century AD by the expanding Roman Empire. Eventually, over a period of just a few hundred years, the Nabataeans went extinct and their ancient desert cities like Hegra and Petra were abandoned. Number 8. Haunted Hawaii Hawaii is not just a gorgeous island paradise, it's also a little bit haunted. Two of the most haunted places in all of Hawaii are located around the area of East Oahu and it's very likely you have never heard of them before. One of these haunted venues is a bridge, while the other is a popular mall. According to Oahu locals, it's the 16th Avenue Bridge that's haunted. The haunting started after a little girl was killed in a hit and run incident. Now people who walk near the bridge in the early hours of the evening claim to witness a little girl reaching for their hand trying to make it safely across the bridge. But by the time they realize what they're looking at, the little girl's haunting apparition is gone. The second haunted place is at a mall in Kahala, where visitors sometimes witness a ghost with no face loitering in department stores and even bathrooms. Employees at the mall have reported that the ghost asked them for help, but when they turn to answer, she has no face, and then she's gone. And so you see, Hawaii is more than beaches and sunshine. It's also full of ghosts and horrors. Did you ever think such a wonderful place could have such terrifying features? Next time you visit this tropical paradise, are you going to check out these places? Let us know in the comment section below. And if you're liking this video, be sure to hit the thumbs up and subscribe buttons if you haven't already. Number 7. The Egyptian Black Desert The Egyptian Black Desert is one of the strangest and most unexpected places in the world. To be quite honest, it almost looks like the surface of Mars. The desert here is an expansive landscape of black sandy plains, black mountains of dust, and strange black rock formations. And while the desert isn't home to any mummies that we know of, it does have a deeper history, geologically speaking. It goes back 180 million years to the Jurassic period when the desert was beneath the sea. But when intense volcanic activity started changing the earth, this land rose as a type of volcanic crater covered in veined marble. It was the volcanic activity that turned the landscape black. But other than rocks and sand, there are some unique things to be found here. The remains of one of the largest dinosaurs in the world was found in the Black Desert 20 years ago, called the Paralitanstromeri. 
This incredible beast was upwards of 59 tons and roughly 85 feet in length. There could be other titanic dinosaurs hidden here under the black sand, but nobody has really done much to look for them in recent years. Number 6. Las Pozas Another one of the weirdest places that you most likely never even heard of is called Las Pozas, located in the thick Mexican jungle. It's a surrealist garden that was dreamt up by Edward James, an eccentric collector of art from the 20th century. When he arrived in Zalitla, Mexico, near the end of the 1940s, he was captivated by the amazing, lush, and beautiful landscape and decided to build his home there. He also went on to create a unique sculptural heaven in the jungle that some have compared to the crazy surrealism of Salvador Dali's artwork. Columns that look like giant flowers, dramatic gates, gothic arches, pavilions with multiple levels, and lovely spiral staircases to nowhere float in mid-air as if they were an invitation to the horizon. Today, the sculpture garden remains standing in the jungle, seemingly defying all architectural labels. It's a strange glimpse of both fantasy and reality, a place you might accidentally mistake for the Garden of Eden. It's definitely not somewhere you want to miss on your next trip to Mexico. Number 5. Shahi Kila The Shahi Kila was once a majestic palace in India, located near the Tapti River in Burhanpur. Almost nothing remains today except for the palace's crumbling ruins. Locals call it a labyrinth because the architecture is so strange. It was originally built by the Faruqi rulers who dominated the land from 1382 until the Mughal Empire assimilated them in 1601. The main attraction of Shahi Kila is the royal bath which miraculously is still almost entirely intact. It's said that the emperor's wife took luxurious baths here in water scented with saffron and rose petals. The ceiling has ancient paintings on it, with one of the paintings supposedly being the inspiration for the Taj Mahal. In fact, the Taj Mahal was supposed to be built in Burhanpur, but it never happened. The chosen site is still a vacant plot of land beside the river, not far from the ruined palace of Shahi Kila. Number 4. Bet Gurvin Maresha Bet Gurvin Maresha is a mysterious archaeological park that encompasses three ancient sites, that of Maresha, Bet Gurvin, and a mysterious fortress used by the Crusaders. The region was first settled during the Iron Age, but later emerged as a major city. Alexander the Great conquered Maresha, which was then colonized by Greek soldiers and left under Hellenistic rule. In the year 40 BC, the Parthians showed up and destroyed the city of Mauritia, which ultimately led to the establishment of Bet Gurvin as the main Jewish town in the area. When there was a Jewish revolt against the Roman rule in AD 66, and the inhabitants of Bet Gurvin were slaughtered one by one. Still, the city bounced back, re establishing itself and growing until the 7th century when the Muslim forces showed up and took the city over. But it was soon annexed to the Kingdom of Jerusalem. A crusader castle was built in the year 1134, and soon after, when the area fell under Muslim control again, the castle, the city, and everything else was burned to the ground. As you can tell, this place has quite a bit of history, but surprisingly, there's actually a lot of the old structures left. Archaeologists have even discovered a labyrinth of subterranean caves covering an area of 741 acres. Many of these caves date back to the original settlements at Mauritius, with at least 3,500 rooms, tombs, and chambers hidden underground. Number 3. Ser Gibi Ser Gibi is an old Roman fortress that you had no idea even existed. It's located in Anglesey, Wales. You see, before the Romans made it all the way to Wales and conquered it, Anglesey was a sacred site for the Druids, who held important religious ceremonies here. As the Roman forces were displacing people by the thousands in the United Kingdom, many of them ran away to Anglesey. By the time the Romans finally got to this place, it was full of mystical Druids and escaping migrants from all over the island. Some historians believe that the Romans went all the way to Anglesey simply to eradicate the Druids, while others say they went to pillage the copper mines, whatever the case they established a large fort in the year 77 AD. It was huge, able to hold 1,000 auxiliary infantrymen. Nobody knows exactly what went on in the years after the fortress was built, other than that the Romans plowed through Wales and took whatever they wanted. Then, by the year 393 AD, the fort was abandoned and the Romans had all but left. What do you think really happened here? 
Number 2. Recopolis. The Recopolis is located near the small Spanish village of Zorita de los Danes in Guadalajara. It's one of the only archaeological sites in the entire world that has ruins left over by the legendary Visigoths, the defeaters of the Roman Empire in 378 AD. The city of Recopolis was built in the year 578 by the most important Visigoth monarch in their history, King Louis Vigild. The Visigoth kingdom at the time went all the way from the edge of southern France to the Iberian Peninsula. The city of Recopolis was to be made from scratch, a completely new city that would be the center of the new Visigoth Empire. It was complete with palaces, workshops, artisan stores, an impressive aqueduct system, and defensive walls, the works. But archaeologists don't know everything about the city. The problem is that in the year 711, Muslim forces invaded Recopolis and defeated the Visigoths. They then dismantled the great city and used the stones to build their own city a few miles up the road. Number 1. The Lost City of Tamau Nobody really knows where the lost city of Tamau actually is. What we do know is that over 500 years ago, it became the first European settlement in Chinese history. The city goes back to a man named Jorge Alvarez, who happened to be immortalized in a life-size statue in the city of Macau, known as the Vegas of Asia. This guy is extremely mysterious, as is his fabled city. Based on what we know from historical documents, Jorge marked the first European settlement in China with a padrao tree in the year 1513. He planted this tree somewhere between Hong Kong and what is today Macau. But historians from all over the world have never actually been able to find the exact location of the marker. Some believe the original city was Chuen Mun, while some say it's located in the far west of Hong Kong. One theory is that the tree was planted on land that is now occupied by one of the busiest places in the world, the Hong Kong International Airport. But regardless of where the city of Tumau stood 500 years ago, it's gone now. It was once a bustling city where East met West, allowing for seamless trade in a multicultural environment. Today, it's likely a ruin underneath an airport. Which of these mysterious places would you love to visit? Let me know your favorite in the comments below. And thanks for watching. If you haven't already, don't forget to hit subscribe for all the best videos from the channel.